Welcome to the Daily Business and Finance Show. In today's episode, we delve into the potential impact of U.S. fiscal dominance and a Trump victory on Bitcoin, as per Stanchart. We'll also discuss Trump's billion-dollar request from the oil industry with promises to dismantle Biden's energy policies. In automotive news, China is poised to lead in EVs, while ICE suppliers remain undervalued and AI continues to stir things up. Meanwhile, Elon Musk reveals that Starlink faces challenges from solar storms. In other news, despite hopes for cannabis rescheduling this year, a Seeking Alpha survey suggests it may not happen so soon. On the global front, Chinese equities continue to present opportunities despite bearish sentiment according to BTIG. We'll also explore why bankruptcy filings are at their highest in a year due to biting interest rates as reported by SNP Global and how real estate stocks are outperforming broader markets with increased chances of rate cuts. Lastly, we'll touch on JP Morgan's latest move hiring a $28 billion Merrill private wealth team. Stay tuned after this short ad break for these stories and more. The escalating threat of fiscal dominance in the United States, marked by a rise in debt and deficits, may prove advantageous for Bitcoin. This is according to Jeff Kendrick from Standard Chartered. He proposes that Bitcoin could serve as an effective safeguard against de-dollarization and waning trust in the U.S. Treasury market. Additionally, if Donald Trump were to secure victory in the upcoming presidential election, this could potentially stimulate digital assets via more relaxed regulation and endorsement of U.S.-based spot exchange-traded funds, or ETFs. Kendrick continues to uphold his price predictions for Bitcoin at $150,000 by the close of 2024 and $200,000 by the end of 2025. Reports suggest that the ex-president, Mr. Trump, has asked for a campaign donation amounting to $1 billion from executives in the oil and gas industry. He has pledged to roll back several environmental regulations put in place by the Biden administration if he returns to power. This would involve lifting the current halt on new approvals for exporting liquefied natural gas and undoing drilling limitations in the Arctic region of Alaska. In related news, new EPA rules regarding power plant emissions are being contested in court by 27 states led by Republicans. Morgan Stanley has put forth the idea that Western automobile companies, Tesla included, are acknowledging China's supremacy in the electric vehicle, or EV, market. Financial pressures are causing firms like General Motors and Ford to reduce their ambitions in the EV sector. This is likely to result in a shift towards less capital expenditure and more collaboration with China. On another note, the Biden administration is planning to increase tariffs on Chinese EV imports by four times. Despite these hurdles, there's potential for artificial intelligence to enhance efficiency within auto manufacturing. Starlink, the internet satellite service by Elon Musk SpaceX, is currently enduring a significant solar storm. This storm is the most potent one since 2003. Despite experiencing disruptions and stress on its satellites, Starlink continues to maintain its service. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has issued a warning about potential risks the solar storm could pose to navigation systems and power grids. Reports from late April hinted at the possibility of the Drug Enforcement Administration, or DEA, reclassifying marijuana from a Schedule 1 to a Schedule 3 controlled substance. However, according to a survey conducted by Seeking Alpha, 63% of participants do not believe this change will occur before the end of the year. If rescheduling were to happen, it could provide tax benefits for operators across multiple states and promote cannabis research. Yet, this process necessitates review by the White House Office of Management and Budget as well as a public comment period, which could potentially delay its execution. Jonathan Krinsky from BTIG proposes that Chinese equities might be a contrarian investment, in spite of the prevailing negative sentiment. The Hang Seng Index has seen an increase of 7.47% this year, which is slightly less than the S&P 500's rise of 8.55%. A recent survey revealed that only 4% of participants considered China as the most appealing major equity market, compared to a significant majority of 57% favoring the U.S. 
However, considering the high volume breakout in Chinese equities and policies favoring small and medium businesses, Scott Rubner from Goldman Sachs is convinced that the rally in China is authentic. In April, filings for corporate bankruptcy in the United States reached a peak not seen in a year, with 66 new cases reported. This data comes from SNP Global Market Intelligence. Companies are feeling the strain due to high interest rates, especially those within the consumer discretionary sector. Three companies, Express, Number Holdings, and Converge One Holdings, have each filed for bankruptcy protection with liabilities exceeding $1 billion. Despite inflation surpassing the target of 2%, there has been no reduction in interest rates by the Federal Reserve. For the second week in a row, real estate stocks have outperformed the broader market due to increased chances of a rate cut in 2024. The Real Estate Select Sector SPDR ETF has seen an increase of 2.13%. Similarly, both the Dow Jones Equity All REIT Total Return Index and FTSE Nariat All Equity REITs have also experienced gains. This surge is attributed to underperforming U.S. job growth and rising unemployment rates, which strengthen the argument for a rate cut. Concurrently, mortgage rates are on a downward trend while applications are increasing as a reaction to this weaker jobs report. In an unprecedented hiring shift, a group overseeing $28 billion in customer funds for Bank of America's Merrill Lynch has transitioned to J.P. Morgan Chase's Wealth Management Division. The team, under the leadership of Eric Gray and Lance Palverini, focuses on ultra-affluent clients and brings in $10 million each year. This achievement outshines RBC Wealth Management's 2023 record hire from UBS. Thank you for tuning into the Daily Business and Finance Show. Stay informed, stay ahead, and remember that the market waits for no one. Until next time, I'm Montgomery Jones. And I'm Amalia Dupre. Let's part ways for now, until tomorrow arrives. This content is sourced from the Seeking Alpha website, so support our podcast by becoming a Seeking Alpha Premium subscriber. See the show notes page for links to sign up. This episode is produced by Classic Studios. This podcast provides information only and should not be construed as financial or business advice. Check out our other podcasts in our network at ClassicStudios.com.